All right. Um, we thank God for today. On remercie le Seigneur pour aujourd'hui. It's a privilege to be here today, and I'm excited for what God wants to speak to His children today. Un privilège est-ce qu'elle a aujourd'hui, et je suis vraiment content pour ce que Dieu veut parler à ses enfants. Before I start, type in the chat, just type in the chat and say, this is going to be good, wherever you are. If you have your hands and you can type, just type in the chat, say, this is going to be good. Avant que je commence, malgré tout que vous vous trouvez, il faut écrire sur le chat que ceci sera vraiment bien, ça sera vraiment bien. I like to know people that are still watching and, and uh, that, that are not sleeping. Because sometimes you put your phone on and you sleep. So <laughs> if you're awake, type, this is going to be good in whatever language you, 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 you speak. Donc, je vais connaître les gens qui sont en train de dormir. Parce qu'il faut avoir un mène au téléphone, mais on est en train de dormir. Et si vous êtes debout, écris malgré la langue que ça sera bien aujourd'hui. Amen. 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 All right, so um, before I start, I'm just going to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to minister to us because um, when I speak, it's the Holy Spirit that brings transformation. Amen. Avant que je commence, je vais prier que le, le Saint-Esprit eh, ministre à moi parce que tout ce que je parle, c'est le Saint-Esprit qui amène la transformation. It's the Holy Spirit who pray that you take absolute control and that you speak through me to me and to your children this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so the topic of today's message is the mind. La thème d'aujourd'hui c'est le mental. The mind. Le mental. And uh, today I'll be addressing the importance or the power of the mind. Aujourd'hui, je vais parler de la pouvoir de l'homme. And I'll be trying to also explain that um, the most of our battles happens first in the mind. Et je vais vous dire aussi que beaucoup de notre combat commence d'abord sur notre mental. The mind is the most crucial place to fight before you fight physically. Le mental, c'est la part plus délicate qu'on doit d'abord commencer à combattre avant spirituel. What is the mind? Quel est le mental? I'm going to quickly say that um, it is referred to as the seat or core center of the human consciousness. It's the center of human consciousness. Donc, je vais dire que le mental, c'est le centre de l'humain, de la conscience de l'humain, être humain. It is also the home of knowledge and understanding. We process knowledge and understanding with our mind. C'est aussi la maison de la compréhension et de la euh, sagesse de l'homme ou de, de le mental. And and the mind is very important or key to human existence. Like to exist without the mind is to be like a zombie or a shell. And people say when you misbehave or when you do something that is not human, they say you are out of your mind. That's right. Separate a madman and a normal man is the mind. How do you know that somebody is mad? You cannot see the mind, but you can see what they are doing and their actions. Comment vous est-ce que vous pouvez connaître que quelqu'un n'est pas normal? Ce n'est pas que vous pouvez voir les mentales, mais c'est vers les actions. But before it becomes an action, it started upstairs. Mais avant que ça devienne une action, ça avait déjà commencé là-bas en haut. I'm going to share something today that hopefully will bring us freedom or liberation 
in how we think. Je vais partager quelque chose aujourd'hui qui va nous donner la libération de la manière que nous on pense. And guess what? When the devil wants to fight you, he starts here. Et il faut connaître que quand avant que l'ennemi commence à vous tromper. You think that the devil will bring thunder and lightning. No, 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 no. The devil knows that if he wins you here, you are defeated. Absolutely. L'ennemi connaît comment il peut nous attraper. Il connaît qu'il va d'abord commencer à, euh, à détruire nos mentales. Et si nous gagnons là-bas, il nous a déjà gagné. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 to 6. I'm going to read it very fast. Or, oh, Pastor, if you're already there, you can read it, whichever one. That's great. 2 uh, Corinthians 10, verses uh, 4 to 6. I read. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when obedience is the part where it says putting every thought under captivity or subjection to Christ is very important la partie que Dieu a dit qu'on met tout notre pensée et dans la subjection ou sur la captivité de Christ c'est vraiment important so every thought that you think you have to put it under captivity or subjection to Christ absolutely tout um, pensée que nous avons on doit mettre ça dans la captivité ou subjection de Christ because if you don't capture it when it's still a thought it will become an action and you can't Absolutely. do that anymore. Yes. So the battle starts from upstairs before it even comes out to the physical. That's right. Everything that exists started in somebody's mind. Absolutely. And God has a mind, and so when God made man, he also gave man a mind. That's right. Because without a mind, you will be a robot. That's right. With the mind, we are able to learn, we are able to, to think, choose, and reason. Absolutely. And the mind and the brain, they work closer together, but they're not the same. Yes. The brain is the physical muscle that uh, communicates with the mind. Notre cerveau, c'est quelque chose qui communique avec le mental. But even a spirit has a mind, but a spirit does not have a physical brain. Même le, l'esprit a un mental, mais il n'a pas un cerveau. I'm going That's to right. I said, even a spirit has a mind, but a spirit does not have a physical brain. Je vais encore dire, même l'esprit a un mental, mais l'esprit n'a pas un cerveau physique. So a mind can exist without a brain, but a brain that doesn't have a mind is useless. Correct. Donc un mental peut exister sans un cerveau, mais un cerveau qui n'a pas du mental est utile. And sometimes in the Bible, God uses heart and mind, like it, it goes back and forth between heart and mind. To That's mean right. The same thing, heart and mind. Et si vous voyez beaucoup de fois dans la Bible, le Seigneur parlait de le cœur et le mental. And in Jeremiah 17, verse 9 to 10, it says quickly, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind. 
to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. That's right. Now you can see from that scripture that it goes between heart and mind, heart and mind. Absolutely. Because uh, when the Bible says heart, um, your physical heart is a muscle. It's just a muscle in your body. You can't do anything. It's only there to pump blood. Absolutely. So when God says heart, it's mostly referring to either your your thoughts or your feelings. And every action is the end product of a thought. Et tout l'action c'est la fin de notre mental. In other words, before an action is birth, a thought has to occur. That's right. Avant une action se réalise, il doit avoir notre pensée ou notre mental. And as far as God is concerned, the way you think is who you are. The Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. That's right. And you are also what you know or who you know. That's what makes you. And the devil knows this. And so the first place you attack is not your money or your house. No, it's your mind. Absolutely. Because you know that peace is in your mind. Joy is in your mind. So if he can take away the peace of mind, or take away the joy of mind, then you cannot enjoy anything around you, no matter how nice it is. Yes, absolutely. So the enemy will always, first of all, go for the mind. And that is his tactic. That is his trick. He goes for the mind. That's right. The enemy plays mind games. That is his uh, specialty. He plays mind games. That's right. Absolutely. And if you're not good in mind games, you are already defeated. Absolutely. But thank God we serve a God <laughs> that that is the master mind game player. And he has given us the trick on how to overcome the mind games of the enemy. It says, be not confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Absolutely. And we know that it's the word of God that we need to renew our mind against the tricks, against the lies of the devil. In the beginning, when the devil came to tempt man in the Garden of Eden, the question he asked Eve was like, did God really say that you should not... <laughs> Can you already see that the, 
the way the devil operates has not changed even till now. Like the first thing it goes for is your mind or how you perceive the word of God. Vous voyez que même jusqu'à aujourd'hui, l'ennemi n'a pas changé. La première chose qui passe, c'est la manière. Il parle là où, pour voir la manière que nous on, on réfléchit et la manière que nous, nous, avons, nous sommes. So he's like, did God really say, actually, it's not true. Because if you do this, this will happen to you. So he's playing with their mind because he knows if you win their mind, their actions will follow. That's right. Don't right. change. The devil had no authority over Adam and Eve. He had no power over them. No power. L'ennemi n'avait aucun force au dessus de Adam et Eve. N'avait aucun force. As a matter of fact, the enemy was in man's jurisdiction because man had the authority and the power over earth. So the enemy had no power, zero power. L'homme était au-dessus de l'ennemi. L'ennemi n'avait aucun force contre l'homme, mais c'est à cause de la manière que là j'avais le matin de l'homme. So the only thing the devil could do was to play mind games or play tricks because he knows he does not need any power. He just needs to confuse you. And once you're confused, he has won. L'ennemi lui-même connaît qu'il n'a pas la force, mais il connaît jouer avec nos mentales. Il sait que s'il peut jouer avec nos mentales, il va nous mettre dans la confusion. He's coming for your mindset. Your mindset. Il vient toujours pour changer nos mentales. Your mindset, whatever you set your mind upon, becomes your mindset. And one single thought is not a mindset, but a combination of thoughts that you are thinking about and meditate and just you know processing will, will now become a mindset. Une seule pensée, ce n'est pas notre mental, mais tout ce que nous sommes en train de penser et garder, c'est ce qui devient maintenant notre mental. The devil is here to give you the wrong mindset. That's all you need to do. Because he knows that once you have the wrong mindset, your actions will automatically mm-hmm. be wrong. There's no, no fight. L'ennemi est toujours là pour nous donner un faux mental, parce qu'il sait que le moment que nous avons un faux mental, on va mettre tout ça en action. Some of you have been binding demons and witches in your village, but your wish is your own mind. <coughs> on passe notre temps à combattre les, les ennemis dans notre village, mais nos vrais problèmes, c'est notre mental. In Nigeria, we pray till thy kingdom come, but that country is there. Because our demon is not, is not the devil, it's our mind. Our mind needs to change. That's right. You've been praying for 10 years, it, it has not changed, and you're still binding demon. Something, <laughs> something is going on, you're not checking where it's coming from. You need to go back to your mind. Even Christ that taught us how to pray, he doesn't he didn't bind demon the way some of us bind demon. We bind demon twenty four seven. But to renew your mind, you will not do that one. But to bind devil, you can bind devil. <coughs> Pastor says, study your word, study the Bible, you will not study. Come for deliverance, then you will show up because you want deliverance. Not knowing <coughs> that your devil is in your mind and you will not renew it. <coughs> It is important to know that the battleground 
start in the mind. C'est vraiment important pour connaître que notre combat commence d'abord dans notre pain. The devil can't force you to do anything that you don't want to do. First of all, he makes it into your mind, and when you want it, you do it. L'ennemi ne peut pas nous forcer à faire quelque chose qu'on ne veut pas faire. D'abord, il commence à transformer notre mental à faire. When Christ came to earth and the enemy tempted him in the wilderness, the enemy came to play the same mind games that he played with Adam in the garden. Quand Dieu était sur cette terre, il était en train de prier ou dans le désert. L'ennemi est venu pour faire la même chose qu'il avait fait avec Adam et Eve, mais... He came to confuse the word of God with the word of God. <laughs> Amen. He thought he was talking to Adam. He thought he was talking to Eve in the beginning. Il a pensé qu'il parlait à Eve au commencement. He did not know that this second Adam, this second Adam is special. Absolutely. This second Adam has a healthy mind that cannot be confused. But. And Jesus defeated the devil with the same word of God. It is written, that is your only weapon against the mind games of the enemy. It is not Your only weapon against the devil when it comes to your mind is not prayer. Prayer is important. It's not fasting. Fasting is very important. But when it comes to your mind, your only weapon in your mind is the word of God. Correct. Don't go and say, Pastor, say I should not pray and fast. That's not what I said. I said prayer and fasting are important. But when it comes to your mind, the word of God is the only weapon against the lies, against the confusion of the devil. Absolutely. A thought is like a mustard seed. Looks like nothing. But when it starts growing, the tree is so big, you can't cut it. That's right. Yeah. Some of us, we are trying to cut a tree down or kill a tree by cutting the fruit instead of cutting the root. You you know what happens when you cut the fruit of a tree? What happens is that the, the, the tree will relax and produce more fruit. It's called pruning. In, in fact, it will multiply. When farmers want a tree to grow more, they cut down the branches and some fruit and mm -hmm. give it time, it bleeds a little bit, and then it will produce way more fruit than before. Absolutely. The fruit is our actions, but the thought is the seed, it's the root. So if you want to kill a tree, you have to go to the root, and that is how you think, your mentality. There's a reason why somebody that you think is happy, someone that has money, 
has cars, has houses, but they still kill themselves. Why? What happened? That's right. C'est pour une raison que quelqu'un que nous pensons qu'ils sont, ils sont contents, ils ont l'argent, la voiture, tout, mais ils se, ils commis, ils se fait tuer et on nous demande pourquoi. C'est pour une raison. Nobody just wakes up in the morning and kills themselves. They have been thinking about it for a long time. So in other words, the battle was already won in the mind even before they took their own lives. Quelqu'un ne veut pas se lever un matin pour se suicider. Cela, c'est quelque chose qui, la personne a déjà commencé à penser ça pour longtemps. Et ça, il a fait maintenant en action. The mind is very important. If the devil gets your mind, you are finished. Donc, notre mental est vraiment important. Parce que si l'ennemi attrape notre mental, c'est fini pour nous. That's why you have to guard your mind. The Bible says guard your heart. But when it says heart, it was referring to your mind, not your not your heart in your muscle or in your body. It's your mind. Because whatever comes into your mind can either make you or destroy you. Quand, les, quand le Seigneur parlait de nos cœurs, il ne parlait pas de notre cœur, mais il parlait de notre mental. Parce que tout ce qui vient de notre mental, c'est ça qui va nous arranger ou c'est ça qui va nous détruire. The Bible says that whatever is pure, whatever is good, or whatever is praiseworthy, in general, whatever is good, think on these things. That's right. Que tout ce qui est bon, il faut qu'on pense à ces choses. Amen. Yeah. Whatever is good, think on these things. Because the more you think about it, the more you can become it. Because it starts with a thought. First it's a thought and then it becomes an action. And when you do it many times it becomes a behavior. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to summarize with this. So, the only thing that is limiting God in your life is your mind. Sky is not your limit. Your mind is your limit. The Bible says that God is able to do more than you can ask. Think or imagine. So if you can think about it, it is too small for God. The Bible says if you can imagine it, then it's too small for God. So the limit to God in your life is your mind, it's not the devil or the sky. Some of you, you think too small, and so you remain small. God says, I can do more than what you think or imagine. So what is stopping you? Imagination is for free. God wants to do something new in your life, but first of all, your mind has to change. Amen. Repentance means change of mind. Repentance it means simply changing your mind. Some of you, you say you have repented just because you confess your sins. No. Repentance is changing your mind. By the grace of God, when next we have a Bible study, I'm going to go deeper into this topic. Amen.
But I pray that with what I've spoken, the Holy Spirit will give us more understanding. And Amen. that we will begin to invest into the renewing of our minds. Amen. Mais je prie que ce que j'ai dit aujourd'hui, que le Saint-Esprit nous donne la compréhension, qu'on va commencer à appliquer ça dans notre vie et dans notre vie. Amen. Amen.